Dick Johnson hopes to carve himself a little slice of motor racing history here at Oran Park this afternoon by equaling Pete Gagan's impressive record of five Australian touring car titles. Now, four of those victories were single race affairs, whereas Johnson has done a little tougher on the trail. His two-car assault in season 88 shell-shocked the opposition, and this year it's been more of the same. <laughs> Johnson and Brock shared the front row for the Amaru opener, but it was John Bow who split them off the line to take the lead. While some were into slipping and sliding, Jim Richards was busy snapping at the Sierras. He got by Johnson, but couldn't crack the defence of Bow, who led the nimble Nissans to the flag. A week later, the teams fronted for round two at Simmons Plains in Tasmania. Peter Brock made a determined bid for victory, but the boss had this one nailed from start to finish. When the water finally receded at Brisbane's Lakeside Raceway, the tin top set really did get into the fire and brimstone business. Dick wasn't ready to hand anyone a share of the spotlight on his home terrain. He bolted, allowing Brock and Longhurst to sort out second before Peter Perfect went for a Tosca. No doubt about this one, though. Clever Dick by a country mile. Round four of the championship was held in the wild, wet west at Wanneroo, where Johnson took off faster than John Friedrich. Bow caught the wrong end of the pineapple from Brock in the first turn, but made a marvellous recovery to storm back through the pack. Dick needed fresh rubber in the shadow of the checkered flag, which enabled Johnny come lately to blitz Longhurst and take the lead at the top of the points table. Round five was the Galar at Malala, where Johnson and Colin Bond shared the front row. First corner was tight, so Brocky shortened it up, and a couple of other cars on the way too. Richards gave chase after the Shell Sierra, but DJ was hauling. This was to be one of his easiest victories in season 89. The new look Sandown hosted race six of the championship, where the quotable Queenslander was again running hot. Rocky almost produced a boil over when he caught the leader at mid-race distance and began to apply the pressure. Teammate Brad Jones, meanwhile, had a boil over of a different kind. In the run to the flag, though, Johnson had too much in reserve to win comfortably. The penultimate round of the series turned out to be the best touring car race for ages at Winton Wonderland. For a spell, you could have been excused for thinking Cams was in the demolition derby sanctioning business. Gricey made a cameo appearance in the Commodore and quickly showed he can be the meanest critter of the litter when given a serve. Tell Malmo farmer George Fury finally delivered a Nissan hiding to the fleet. Rocky recovered from a spin to nail second, while Mark Skate picked up third. But it was a day the Shell Sierra boys would prefer to forget. With only the grand final to run, Johnson remains the series leader. 11 clear of bow and in the box seat to win the crown a fourth time. Well, when you're on top, there's only one way you can go. And uh, <clears throat> we certainly don't want to go downhill. So we're basically trying to keep abreast of everything. It's very expensive. Trying to keep uh, the development up, you know, and traipsing from one end of the country to the other. But uh, basically, I'm only doing it for the guys and, and the family. Yesterday's qualifying for the Park Royal Pole saw six cars under Johnson's front row effort of last year. The Queenslander took off in the morning session to be quickest of the bunch, a full second under his qualifying mark 12 months ago. But stalking him closely were Peter Brock and the Mobile Sierra, Tasmanian John Bow in the second shell machine, and young Glenn Seaton aboard the Peter Jackson Ford. Bow was hoping to make the front row to give his title aspirations a much needed boost of confidence, besides being around to play Shepherd in the event of Dazzling Dick missing the jump. Mate, I've uh, performed my usual abysmal qualifying uh, exhibition, so I'm a bit far down the grid to just bolt, so all I can do is. Uh, and hang in there and put the, the race together properly and I, I haven't seen him fluff the start anyway ever so I don't reckon that's a big chance. By the time the afternoon session arrived Peter Perfect was really primed to go after his 50th career pole position. He cranked up the mobile Sierra to sizzle around the rural layout in 1 minute 10.71 seconds. 31 hundredths faster than Johnson and the Park Royal Pole. A real team effort. The tyre company's got to have the right tyres, you've got to have the right engine, you've got to have it, you know, coming together so that the car's right to drive. When it's good to drive, the, the driver can really take those extra liberties with it through the fast corners. And uh, a few quick bits around Iron Park here where uh, I literally threw that car around that he could do that sort of lap time and uh, it was sensational. I loved it. So grand final day pole to Peter Brock with Johnson to start from position number two. 
out of three, Tony Longhurst in the Benson and Hedges Sierra. Four, John Bow in the second of the Shell Sierras. Five, Jimmy Richards in the Nissan GTSR Skyline. Six, Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson Ford. Seven, Andrew Medecki in the Kenwood Blast Dynamic Sierra. Eight, Tal Malmo's George Fury in the second of the Skylines. Nine, Alan Moffat in car number nine, the ANZ Sierra. And topping the ten, Colin Bond in the Caltex Cosworth. And the cars are out on the circuit at the moment, completing first of two warm-up laps. The grand final day at Oran Park in Sydney. The scene is set for what should be a very, very interesting race today, a one-hour race. And, of course, Dick Johnson poised to collect yet another touring car title. And that will put him up alongside uh, Pete Gagan, as we said earlier. Oh. Five touring car titles. Brock's had a spin or a half lose, in fact, coming up onto the straight. I wonder what the big cheer from the grandstand was. He's um, obviously trying to get some warmth into his tyres by lighting up the rears, and he lit them up and took off in the wrong direction. Goodness me, that'll... Uh... It's going to be nice and wet out there, too. Mm. Oh. So that should light the tyres up. Peter Brock... 50th career pole position in the Mobile One Racing Sierra. Dick Johnson, an 11 point break in the championship over John Bauer. And he sits on the outside of the front row. Row number two, of course. We went through the grid for you. Tony Longhurst, John Bauer, Jim Richards, and Seaton, then Andrew Medecki. Get set for the grand final of the Shell Ultra Touring Car Championship from Sydney's Oran Park. Can Brocky do it? They're racing and they get away smartly with Johnson out with a blinder. Brock still trying to light the tyre. Seaton in for a good start in the two shell cars. And here comes Brocky storming down the inside and Longhurst comes with him. Just look at the gap they put over the rest of them as they come down through the kick into the first corner. Brock, the race leader, doing it for Mobile in the two shell cars. Longhurst is next. A brilliant start by Andrew Medecki. Seaton is one out back behind them. And they race under the Yokohama Bridge and down to the right-hander. A little bit of pressure already for Brock in 0-5. Down towards champion corner. And a good start from John Bauer. Sensational start. Brock initially looked as though he uh, hesitated. And the other cars got the jump, but then he got the power down very effectively. And made a great run down to the first left-hander. These guys are delicately trying to balance their cars on cold tyres. And Dick Johnson just losing a little bit of ground that time over the bridge to Brock as they make the run down of this very fast left-hand run through Yamaha corner and up to what is effectively a very, very fast chicane. Coming up now to win lap number one, one hour racing. Here's George Fury making a run on Colin Bond. Gee, that was a good move. Moment of truth there for Colin Bond and the Caltech Sierra, but across the strike, one lap completed. It's Brocky. Out in front in the mobile Sierra, down through the kink. Looking supremely confident here today at Oran Park. He's working pretty hard. Johnson sits in behind him, John Bow, as we take our race cam with race leader Peter Brock. Makes a run up now towards the bridge. Now it's very rough over here. Grabs uh, third gear by the look of it. Settles the car, runs right out to the white line. Still holding his ground over Johnson. And the main trick I would imagine, never having driven one of these sorts of cars, would be just to be gentle with the throttle in the early laps because they will light up about 500 horsepower and spit you into the boonies faster than you can blink. Johnson makes a little bit of ground that time over the flip-flop. Brock checks his mirrors. It's Bow in third, Longhurst behind, then Medecki and Seaton. Johnson really covers some territory nicely down there into the braking area and up onto the straight twin lap number two. Pushing hard, isn't he, Johnson? He certainly is. He's got all the motivation in the world. Five titles. Equaling the record set by Pete Gagan and sort of putting him right up there with the touring car elite. the Yokohama Bridge. Brock got away just momentarily there from uh, Dick Johnson. I'd say Peter Brock's got a fair amount of motivation himself today. Well, he's had a string of 
semi-annoying second place as uh, so close it gets so far at Winton and at Sandown. The car showed a lot of promise. At Simmons Plains it was the same, where he's uh, tagged these shell cars. Not only that, he'd just like to stick it to Dick in the final round of the championship. And it will also give him a win today, a record uh, number of touring car championship victories. All-time victories, that is. They come up once again to Honda Corner. Over the flip-flop. Down to the left-hander. Dick's not letting uh, Brock get too far away from him at this stage. They're, both of them have run away a little from John Bow and Tony Longhurst, who run third and fourth on the road. Extraordinary times from these cars in practice. A 1 minute 10.71 for Brock. That's just unbelievable for these sorts of cars. And even in the, the, this morning's warm-up, with Brock on um, uh, his harder compound race tyre, a full load of fuel, or a race load of fuel, uh, recording a 1 minute 11.4 or 5, which is extraordinary once again. Even that's a couple of seconds under the existing lap record. There's the gap. I'm sorry, there's the gap, Brock. Johnson, there's John Bow running in third spot. Tony Longhurst back there in fourth. Andrew Medecki is fifth. Glenn Seaton is sixth. That's the order. And behind Seaton, Jimmy Richards in the Nissan. And George Fury, Mark Scaife, they're doing well. And amongst them also Alan Moffat in car number nine, the ANZ Sierra. It's Tony Longhurst. The season started so well for Tony. We all expected him to be up there running with Johnson. It hasn't really happened. In fact, uh, the big improver during the season has been Peter Brock. Glenn Seaton and the Peter Jackson Nissan sits in behind Medecki's Kenwood Blast Dynamic Sierra. Those two guys, of course, both had the big mid-season rebuilds after uh, the fiery lakeside uh, debacle. I think you have to say that the uh, Peter Jackson Seaton racing car has made some pretty substantial improvements too. They've had a tough year, no doubt about that. And uh, they're now getting their car right up onto the pace. And they've signed John Goss to go drive at Bathurst. So I believe. Gossy certainly did a great job for the Jaguar team at Bathurst in 85. And he's got plenty of experience that that'll be a great combination. And I would uh, think uh, Goss and probably team then with uh, Glenn for the endurance races. I would work himself back into uh, the business again. Yeah, almost certainly, I should think. They'll be running a second car as well at Bathurst. It will not have a start prior to Bathurst, but uh, Steve Masterton will make a return to drive that second vehicle with uh, a co-driver yet to be named. Two-car teams seem to be the rage. Here's Jimmy Richards. And this sound missing out just a touch in uh, outright horsepower to the Sierras at Oran Park. It's taken a few laps, but Jim's now on the boil. I recall two years ago that uh, a certain Mr. Seaton and Mr. Richards being a bit like this in a touring car grand final as we take Dulux Auto Colour race cam and watching Jim Richards through the left-hand kink. Back to second gear. The super smooth Richo. Yeah, that was desperate deeds on the last uh, lap, wasn't it? Yep. Decided, uh, okay, Richards victory in the last round of the touring car championship and the touring car championship. Only this time it's Richards in the rice burner with the Nissan. So they're chasing Longhurst, these guys. You can see Tony off in the distance. Jim getting closer all the time, though, in the number two GTSR Turbo. Doesn't that new car for next year look unbelievably sensation for Nissan? That is sensational for Nissan. Sure does. Cool. Looks like it's built by NASA. It's built for a purpose, that's yeah, for sure. That's winning. Up again to Honda Corner. Andrew Medecki closes on Tony Longhurst and brings along Glenn Seaton and Jim Richards for the tow. Up front, it's still the same. Peter Brock in the Mobile One Racing Sierra from Dick Johnson. John Bauer. And then this is the scrap for fourth, fifth and sixth. The improver out of the four here might well be uh, Jimmy Richards. Big move here from Glenn Seaton down on the inside of Andrew Medecki. Good move, brought it off. Richard now moves right in behind Medecki. You can't get much closer than that. 
Gilux Auto Color Race Cam tells the story, though, as we make the way up to uh, Yokohama Bridge. Sensational pitches. These four cars are really getting quite close now. I'd say that Medecki's in a little bit of strife in terms of uh, Jim Richards about to make an attack. Very fast corner through the left-hander at Yamaha, and if the car touches the ripple strip on the inside, it can bounce you out into nowhere land. You see that Medecki just gets into the grass a little bit down there. And uh, joining us in the commentary and probably being well, a little bit twitchy and uh, a bit green. Brad Jones forming what normally is part two of the Mobile One Racing Team, watching Jim Richards here. And look at this move on as they tackle the uh, little Toyota. Uh, Brad, there's a good job here from Richo. Fantastic job. Of course, everyone realises Richo is one of the um, the top drivers, and uh, he's proving that. He's a little bit down on horsepower, but after a bad start, he's uh, working his way back through the field. He sits right in behind uh, Andrew Medecki in the Kenwood Blast Dynamics Sierra. And notice how Glenn Seaton is now sitting on the tail of Tony Longhurst. We've got that dice covered. Uh, thanks to uh, Race Cam, as Richards uh, just loses out uh, a touch on the run up to Yokohama this time. Tony Longhurst running in fourth, Seaton fifth, Medecki sixth, and of course Richards seventh. Tony's uh, not so much at the point, but he will be slowing these guys down a little bit, I think. He, they, they actually. Uh, get very close up towards the back of the circuit and then he um, he gets away a little bit with the legs down the straight. Uh, his car looks to be sliding a lot and he's working quite hard to stay where he is. You see Glenn's right on him now. So uh, they'll all bunch up again and it could be quite an interesting dice. Coming up to put a lap on one of the uh, Toyota Corolla stays out of the way. John Faulkner, John Smith and 17-year-old uh, Sydney Sprint Car racer Brooke Tatnell running for Toyota with their start search program this afternoon. Andy Medecki. Right there, Brad. Seaton really is getting onto the tail of Longhurst now. Richo's the one to watch here because uh, even though he loses a little bit down the straight, he's very, very hungry and he's, uh, he'll make a move on them anywhere he can. The startling thing about the way in which he drives, it's just he keeps the pressure up and never lets it go even 1%. There's Peter Brock, very much of the same mould. And he's doing a pretty good job out there at the moment. Just correcting a fair bit of oversteer through that corner. That car would be pretty delicate through there. Yeah, it's in the warm-up this morning. Pete was about a second quicker than anyone else. Well, he was a second quicker. And I'm a little surprised Dick's hanging on to him uh, like he is. The, the car is working fantastically. You just can't believe how fast he is in the thing. Um, the Bridgestones are working well. And uh, in a race trim, we thought we had a package which uh, would just about give him half a lap to lead by the end, but that's not the case at the moment. There he is, our race leader, Peter Brock. Let's recap them for you on the Caltex race score. Brocky leading from Dick Johnson, John Bauer, the second of the Shell cars in third spot. Tony Longhurst is in fourth. Glenn Seaton is in fifth. And don't forget, Toyota through Corolla give you a chance today to win a Corolla in our seven sports sweepstakes. And all you have to do is fill out the three questions. Toyota, oh, what a something, Mount somewhere, Bathurst, and seven, something else. All you have to do is put them on the back of an envelope, put your name, and send it to Corolla Seven Sports Sweepstakes, Television Centre, Epping, New South Wales, 2121. Could win you a new Corolla when we go to Amaru Park for our next meeting. Back in just a tick. Peter Brock continues to lead the grand final of the Australian Touring Car Championship over defending champion Dick Johnson and John Bow at Sydney's Oran Park Raceway. Brock skips away to three or four car length uh, lead. Johnson manages to bridge it again. It's interesting to watch the way the, the rubber band works between the two cars. It would seem as though Dick is making a better run under brakes in places, but Brock is uh, carrying a little bit more speed in the early part of the turn and just pulling away slightly. But, uh, the cars are sort of seesawing from... Uh, 15 to 20 metres to maybe 50 metres on different parts of the circuit. There's Dick again, making a bit of a lunge. This time he holds the gap pretty nicely. Coming They're both down. working very hard. John's a little closer this time. He's pulled up um, a little bit of uh, distance now on uh, Peter Brock. That's the closest he's been since the race started. Come across the start-finishing line. He's going to get down to uh, 
really who's going to make the big move, whether Johnson is prepared to sit in behind Brock at this stage or really start to apply the pressure. Once again, at the end of the start-finish straight. Laying a bit of rubber that time was Brock as he got back on the gas and lit up the Bridgestones. Let's recap them for you where they're running at the moment, the top 10 in this grand final in our Caltex race score. Brock is the race leader. Dick Johnson in second. John Bow is third. Tony Longhurst fourth. Glenn Seaton is now up to fifth. Sixth spot held by Jim Richards. Seventh by Alan Moffat. Eighth by George Fury. Ninth Colin Bond in the top 10. Mark Scaife. Just watching Dick's car in a couple of places there, Mike, the, particularly coming up onto the straight, you can actually see the uh, inside rear wheel hopping off the ground. That's something that I haven't seen either of the Johnson cars doing all year, but it seems to be happening here. That, that's certainly usually been one of their strong points, that some of the Sierras seem to get the jitters up in the turns. We'll see what it does this time. The, uh, the Johnson cars tend to be quite soft in their setup, so uh, they tend to get traction anywhere they drive, ripple strips, dirt, black stuff. <laughs> They, uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, where our cars or Peter's car is uh, quite hard and it surprised a lot of people this weekend just how well his car is putting the power down. You watch uh, the inside rear of Johnson's car through here. Watch it skip. There it is, boing, boing, yeah. boing, boing. You can see fresh air under it. And, and uh, Brock's car, even though it's stiffer, is surprisingly sticking to the ground. It sort of doesn't make sense. Well, the tyres that Peter's using are actually the same ones as... Uh, he had for Sandown. The first run there were uh, on experimentals and we were, he was so pleased with them, they were so successful that he's running on them again today. Um, and so hopefully the Dunlops are a very known quantity but the, uh, the Bridgestone should be there at the end as well this weekend. Johnson certainly got some good speed in places there. I think Dick would be hanging on to him as tightly as he, he can. Um, to win the, the championship would be great but to get beaten by Brock in the last round wouldn't be something he'd be looking forward to. So. Uh, I think he'd be throwing everything at Peter and... Uh, Gee, he looks good across there. Yeah, he's really gobbling. Do you, do you have to be mindful of temperatures, as Andrew Bedecki incidentally calls to the pits? Do you uh, have to be mindful of temperatures in these things, Brad, when you're so close to another guy? Yes, you do. And that, that, that's what my next comment was going to be. I'm surprised that Dick can sit as close to Peter as he is without um, worrying too much about the water temperature, or maybe he's just forgotten about it. Andrew Bedecki in the pits, the Kenwood Blast Dynamic Sierra. Second visit there for uh, Andrew. He was running so strongly uh, early in the race, but a couple of stops certainly put him back. Brock drops it in on one of the... Uh, he does that so well, doesn't he? Yes. Then leaves Dick to fend off as they run down the short straight to Champion Plugs Corner. That gave Peter probably a car length break. And Dick's got to make all that up again as you see them coming up over the top of Yokohama. It's interesting to see the uh, gap that Dick Johnson's been able to put on his own shell teammate, John Bauer, who just doesn't quite seem to be able to get into the into the blue here, as it were. He's, uh, he's actually sitting about the same distance for the last couple of laps that these two initially pulled away from him very quickly, but... Well, Dick, of course, sat in the draft. There's Brocky 44 from Melbourne, driving the Mobile One Sierra. First in the 74, 78, 80 Australian Touring Car Championship. Winner of Bathurst nine times, Sandown 500 nine times, and currently third in the Shell Touring Car Championship on 60 points. Peter Perfect. And Perfect, he's been so far in this grand final round this afternoon. I think you're right, Brad, that Dick would like to come up trumps uh, for, the, uh, for the final race here. With Shell, the uh, series sponsor, and is the sponsor of uh, Dick's team. So we spotted one round sideways in front of the mob there. Um, to have all the wind taken out of your sails by the man in the mobile machine on well, grand final day. That was Kevin Waldock, incidentally, in the, uh, the yellow Sierra. You see how to pointing the wrong way. There's Dick coming up. Once again, they put uh, a lap. One of the little uh, Toyota Corollas. And of course, uh, chasing the manufacturer's title today, starting uh, three points ahead of Ford going into the grand final with uh, Johnny Smith, John Faulkner and young Brooke Tatnell trying to get those three home and wrap up the manufacturer's title. Incidentally, Waldock in the Blast Dynamics, car number 55 is the winner of today's Dulux Auto Colour Best Presented Car Award. There's Peter Brock working very, very hard with Race Cam looking over his shoulder. I think he's up onto the back of Kenny Matthews here who's showing plenty of straight line speed as Peter grabs fifth. 
And now he's really got Johnson hard on his tail. Brock would be loving all this. At the start of the year when he went over and purchased the Rouse cars, um, no one actually thought he had a chance of uh, being competitive, let alone leading a race. And now he's uh, waving the flag out the front and loving every bit of it, I would think. I don't know whether it's, um, it's just a, a paint deception, but the cars look noticeably different in their ride height. Sometimes just with different colour cars, it can trap you, but Peter's car looks to be a little bit lower at the rear than Dick's car. I think it's a bit lower all around. But Peter, has, when he sets the car up, he tends to like them very low, and uh, if you walk around the pits, when they're sitting side by side, it's quite noticeable. Peter Brock making his way past the... Uh, the Ashby Reed uh, Dulux Commodore. And while this little scrap's continuing, as Dick really starts to get on the tail now, John Bauer is starting to come from the clouds in third. Brock's got his lights on and everything flashing. The arm will be out the window shortly. <laughs> Warding them off before he gets there. 14-6, lap 19, <laughs> position one. And the gap, he knows exactly what it is. So you don't have to worry about holding that out to him, Steph. You haven't got to be Einstein to work that out today. Uh, look for John Bauer. He's just sitting back about three or four car lengths behind uh, Dick Johnson. It'll be interesting if he closes up on Johnson, what to, what to do? Jim Richards, I understand, is heading towards the pits in the Nissan. Oh, dear. That's a bit of a head shake. John Bauer is really closing in on the Yes, he is. He's, He's uh, got that gap in half. There's Richards. Jimmy Richards in the pits for a tyre change. Is that all round? Yes, it is. All four. We go back to the racetrack, pick up on the lead. Jim was sixth. Not like Richo. He usually is very good on tyres and he'll nurse the thing as long as he can. Sounds to me like they might have opted for something a little different just to see how it would work because uh, what you wouldn't be seeing or feeling in your lounge room at the moment is it is freezing cold here today and they maybe thought that they could get away with a softer tyre in the conditions. But, uh, well, they've got a new rate, a new qualifier, which they've been um, experimenting with and which Ritro used yesterday to a lot of, with a lot of success. Maybe they're experimenting a little with a new tyre as well. My toes are still cold. It's because you haven't got a roof on your car. That's or right. Peter. It's Peter Brock, still leading Dick Johnson. John Bauer sits back in third spot on the racetrack. And they're coming up to put a lap on uh, another group of cars as they make the run down to the right-hander a champion. Peter will leave it right to the last moment, drop in on one, leave Dick paced back. That was Chris Lambton in the bow repairs car. Chris has been uh, privateer doing well, 48. Is there more strife than Speed Gordon? That's Wayne Park. Now, Wayne, uh, the mystic uh, entry. It's mystic appropriately right, known. It? Yeah. But uh, beautifully turned out car. One of the best turnout cars here today, Wayne Park, is one of the Commodore privateers. And uh, he's out of commission at this stage. Wasn't turned out quite well enough to win the uh, Dulux Auto Color Best Presented Car Award, though. Kevin Waldock won that in the uh, 55 car, the Blast Dynamics uh, entry. Murray Carter in 14. Brock trying to get out from under and get around Murray. Lead uh, Dick and Mary Chase. Here they come down the start finishing straight. He's actually got a little bit of a gap on Dick this time. That, I think, is a result of some of the lap cars. Brock plays that game ever so well. Just waits at the last moment, dives to the inside or the outside on a car. So I think that all started back at the kink last lap round. Brock, as he does so expertly, just managed to slip under a slower car and snook at Dick momentarily. Once you lose that three or four car lengths, it's hard to pull it back. On such a struggle, you've got to start working the car and the tyres. And all this is happening, John Bowe's closing up on them here. Now, a bit of a dilemma, I guess, for John Bowe. What does Bowe do? Go out and run with Brock and try and run him out of puff and let Dick pick up the pieces? Because John made an electric start off the second row, went with Dick. Brock seemed marginally slower, but caught it up nicely and regained before the first corner. But Peter Perfect in the Mobile One uh, Ford Sierra. Over the dog leg, coming down. There's Dick, second, Johnny Bow is third. 35 minutes of racing remaining in this one hour final round of the Australian Touring Car Championship.
JB is probably the smart one here. He's uh, gone out a little more gently than the other two, maybe conserving his tyres a little bit, getting ready to attack towards the end of this race. He really needs Dick to finish in about six spot or so. John <laughs> to win it. Maybe you'll punt him off. And then, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Not unless he's got another team to go to next year. <laughs> Let's recap them for you on our Caltex race score. Peter Brock is your race leader from Dick Johnson. John Bauer, third. Fourth spot held by Glenn Seaton. And fifth by Tony Longhurst. We should be back in a moment. We've reached the halfway point in the grand final of the Shell Ultra Australian Touring Car Championship and here is our race leader, Peter Brock. 0-5, the Mobile One Ford Sierra. Still holding that gap from Dick Johnson and John Bauer as he heads under Yokohama Bridge. We take race cam with Peter Brock. We're riding with the leader in the race. And an opportunity also to... Uh, to pay a vote of thanks to uh, Seven's race cam team for season 89. And I refer to Charlie Busby, Brian Yellen and Mark Woodley, who have been kept very busy riding us with the pictures from the touring car title where our other team is in the United States, covering all of the NASCAR and uh, card IndyCar action, also for the networks over there. The boys have done a great job outfitting uh, up to uh, five cars per race meeting and they've done splendidly to bring us some great picks. There's Glenn Seaton, still sitting back well within the uh, the top six. Seaton, of course, at the moment. Running in fourth on the road in the Peter Jackson Sierra. And it's good to see him having a, uh, a great run here this afternoon. Well, he's had a fairly lousy year, I guess, up to this point, but he's, uh, he's making up for it today. Well turned out uh, car, Glenn and uh, Dad uh, Bo Seaton putting their uh, package together. And as Bradley mentioned uh, earlier, they plan to go to Mount Panorama at Bathurst with a two-car team. John Goss joining uh, Glenn, Steve Masterton, and uh, another driver yet to be named in the second of the Peter Jackson uh, team cars for Bathurst. And gee, the more we uh, look at what's to come on uh, Seven Motorsport for the year, the jewel in uh, our crown, obviously, is the, uh, the Tui's 1000 at Bathurst. As I mentioned, race cam before, we've got a number of surprises for you. That telecast comes along. New technology that will be introduced for the first time. Here he comes across uh, Yokohama. Race still uh, the same with Brock leading from uh, Dick Johnson. Glenn's car looks good. It's not sliding or bucking no. too much. It's, uh, it's just doing the job, which is a, a good thing. And he should be there towards the end. Don't forget the question that we raised for you, that you can have your say on Group A racing, all those people that go back over the years. The question we put is, should the technical rules governing Australian touring car racing be fine-tuned for 1990 now to encourage closer competition between the brands? Now, all you have to do if you want to register a yes or a no vote on that subject, and the phones will be open until 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. If you don't agree, leave things the way they are. Dial 0211626. If you believe they should be changed to make it a little closer, dial 02 11628. We'll let you know the result of that poll. Sports World across the Australian television network next Sunday morning. Back on track. Dick Johnson, that gap about the same at this stage. And John Bauer, probably, yep, about the same. So they've gone past the halfway mark. A one-hour timed race, as all the uh, events have been uh, this year, with the exception of the uh, Wanneroo round, which was a 50-minute race. And Lakeside, which was 30, wasn't it? I, I thought that went far for day. Yeah, I think... <laughs> <laughs> Top five cars here, Sierras, and of course, I guess that's uh, a large part of what uh, our poll is about. These cars have been so dominant the past two seasons. Is there a need to change to put some competitiveness back into A, Holden, and B, bring back some of the other makes that have gone by the board in the last couple of seasons? They go beneath the bridge, Brocky, DJ, and JB. Glenn Seaton, fourth spot. Tony Longhurst is in fifth, and the first non Sierra in uh, sixth position is George Fuel, followed by Alan Moffat. Richards who uh, went to the pits earlier for a tyre change, is now back up to 10th spot and closing on the leading division. 
Dick's certainly still having a go. You watch that car duck and dive around. It's having a bit of a slide. You've got to wonder what it's doing to the tyres. You know, the half race distance now. They can only take that sort of treatment for so long. You watch Brock when you're in the car with him. He actually turns a bit past the point. He's got a bit of understeer in his car and it comes out a little bit tarly, but um, he certainly looks more relaxed in the car than Dick and his car's not ducking and diving as quite as much. So uh, it's still a very interesting race. Tyres a real factor here in this? Not, yes, not, yeah, not so I'm much as they were, obviously, between them. <laughs> no, but they are. Um, at the end of the race at Sandown, um, you know, the, the tyres were worn out. They, they're there to do the job and they build them to run for an hour and when they get towards that point, um, you know, they're getting ragged. Well, they're really getting a little ragged now. They've got so much temperature in them. Um, you know, they just wear out. It's... Uh, the interesting thing here is with the Bridgestones and the Dunlops, the Dunlops are a very known quantity and everyone knows that they're going to do the end of the race. They'll still be reasonably quick at the end of the hour, but the Bridgestone, they're a little bit of an unknown quantity. Well, Dick Johnson's running the D15 Dunlops and it's their uh, first anniversary here today. Those tyres debuted at uh, this round of the Touring Car Championship at Oran Park 12 months ago and uh, well, they've pretty much blitzed the thing since then, haven't they? Until, of course, uh, we got to winter. Yes, and it uh, looks like today PB is going to um, wave the Bridgestone flag quite hard and fast. Well, he wasn't disgraced at Winton. No, Winton wasn't <laughs> disgraced. Yeah, he did a great job there, and he's, he's been so close at the last two events. Um, look, see the Vitali there. He's trying to get around a bit in the last couple of laps. Well, it's 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 understeering a little bit coming into the turn, and that makes it a little bit tarly coming out. Um, as I said, you know, they've been 30 minutes now, so everything's getting a little hot, a little bothered as well as a driver, pretty hard working there. 30 minutes, you're starting to look around, you think another 30 minutes. <laughs> exactly, so is Brock content to sit with uh, Dick Johnson that close on his tail or does he want to try and break away? No, I don't think he'd want to try and break away. But Dick's the one that would have, be more likely to have a problem. As I said, when they sit that close, they tend to get hot quickly. Um, you know, Dick would be ducking in and out of the air. The only good thing is when you get out in the air, you only need to do a lap and a half out in that and uh, brings the temperature down dramatically. And that's what's happening with Dick. You know, he's going, dropping back, and then he's catching up. He's dropping back. Mm. Well, he's just dropped back now. Let things cool down a little bit. We can expect in another couple of laps to see him hard on the pace again and having another move to challenge Peter Brock for the lead in this race. Brock leading from the outset, coming off pole position. His 50th pole position, a record in touring car racing. And in fact, victory here today would give him uh, the outright record for the greatest number of touring car victories in Australia. He currently is on 32 career victories, equal with Alan Moffat. Car number 33, we mentioned him earlier. 17-year-old Brooke Tatnell running for Toyota today as part of their start search program. Bradley, you'd know uh, after watching this youngster. <laughs> it might seem a little underpowered for him. He's used to about four or 500 horsepower around on the, uh, the clay tracks. Is he ever? I'm a sprint car fan. I always go out on the Friday and the Saturday night watch them at uh, Liverpool and Granville. And Brooks probably trying to work out what the other pedal is there. He's, uh, he's not used to pressing a clutch down, I wouldn't think, but he's doing a great job today. Well, he qualified uh, only a tick behind John Faulkner and John Smith and the other two uh, Toyota Corollas, so he hasn't done half bad on that point alone. Well, he's one of... Uh, of a number of youngsters from all forms of motorsport, the Toyota, have given opportunity to run in their Star Search program this year. The top two drivers uh, will get to uh, run at uh, Mount Panorama in the Tui's 1000 a little later in the year. I think Brooke would have to be looking pretty good for that at the moment. So he continues on in the Toyota. And they look good to take out the Manufacturers Championship side of proceedings. It'll also be resolved here this afternoon. So Brooke Tatnell. Youngster continues on. He'd have been just as happy if it had rained and thrown some mud on the circuit for the play. He'd then he'd start looking for some horsepower. Yeah, that's right. Is Georgie Fury and Alan Moffat. Also running in the top ten this afternoon, George, the winner of uh, Winton Round, the penultimate round of the championship. Fury is in position six, Moffat in position number seven. Fury the first of the non-Sierras. Good to see Alan up there with them this afternoon. Very determined. And then the, uh, the ANZ colours. SO supported for the uh, Enduros uh, later this year. Also running a two-car team for uh, Bathurst and the Tui's 1000. 
Neville done. Crichton in the second of the Benson and Hedges entries has fallen victim to the pace and uh, gone to the pits. But uh, Tony Longhurst stood out there circulating just up ahead of this pair. Joe Malmo Farmer. Georgie Fury. A little ray of sunshine he brought to uh, Nissan after a season of fairly hard competition, winning the uh, Winton round. And did it superbly. You notice how Allen's gradually increasing the tempo throughout the season. Yep. You just get the feeling that when we get to Bathurst again, that little ANZ car is going to be at the head of the field somewhere. Wound up like a rubber band he'll be by the time we get to Mount Panorama and all raring to go. And he also picks up on the way to Bathurst, a guy by the name of Rudy Eggenberger. Won't do any harm. And also Klaus Nietzwitz, the man who teamed with him last year. They look like being... I guess it's hard to say, a guy that's running around in seventh spot at the moment, but you get to Bathurst, an endurance race, and all of a sudden he pole vaults six spots and becomes the favourite. That's uh, Alan style. Loves endurance racing. He's having a great scrap here with uh, George Fury at the moment. He's having a little poke for sure, and uh, I'll tell you what, he's in a good position here because it'll be interesting to see who's got the squirt, and I, I think I know where I'd have my money, so to speak. Pardon the pun. I think he's just happy to sit in there and... Uh, Play around. I was looking at the wall. That was a good one. Alan doesn't like all that stuff happening. We'll go back to the race leader again, Peter Brock. Johnson gets on the pace again. Closes up behind Peter Brock as they run up to Honda Corner through Pepsi. I reckon if these two guys stay in this formation and with this sort of gap between them to the flag, there'll be some huffing and puffing from uh, both the bodies when they get out of the cars. They are yep. working very hard. And this is a real drawn out smack them down battle between the two top guns of Australian touring car racing they've been that way for a decade or more and we've covered two-thirds race distance just under 20 minutes to go Rocky could thrive on this all day long you throw in a bit of rain a little bit of ice and all that you can cope with it and I think Dick would be enjoying because they give each other racing room if the gaps there Dick will go for it if not he won't uh, get into slamming them out of the way. He's got too much at stake here today. Part of the uh, Mobile One race team. In good rope, as I see there. Doing timings and so forth. They should be quite happy. Though it doesn't look that way. And uh, one of the Caltex cars just pulled off there, exiting the bridge area. It might have been Matthews or obviously Colin Bond. But just uh, going back to that question of um, Alan Moffat and George Fury, I... I don't know, but I reckon he's got maybe a 17, could even be an 18% chance of getting past Fury. A gap remains constant between our race leader, Peter Brock, and uh, Dick Johnson. If you look back behind them, though, they've managed to run away again from John Bauer, who is up to third, but was much closer about 10 laps ago. Glenn Seaton still in fourth place. Tony Longhurst in fifth. George Fury, of course, and uh, then followed by Alan Moffat. John Bauer still stalking these two guys. Mark Scaife. Just had a lap put on him by Peter Brock and uh, pulls wide so that Dick Johnson gets a nice, easy run, which is very professional of him. Mark's probably uh, a little bit disappointed um, given the fact that he did so very well at Winton. And he had a few problems with the car yesterday. Back yes, down the stick again. Mark Scaife was uh, involved in a little uh, tangle, I think, with John Smith and mm. uh, didn't do much for the, uh, the front suspension. They really do hoot down the front straight here, don't they? Uh, according to their gearing charts, exactly uh, 150 mile an hour, and considering that it's not the world's longest straight, and they come out at the top corner probably in the order of 50 or 60 mile an hour, that's not a bad speed going down the straight. Coming up on one of the uh, BMW 635s at Somariva.
velocity type, but Peter Paul at it at the right time. Looking back to John Bauer. The fellow we expected to be in the uh, scrap here today, right up to his hocks, and it was Jimmy Richards carrying our Dulux Auto Color race cam, but uh, it's been a bit of a battle so far, Jim. Yes, we uh, chose a little bit softer tyre, and uh, I had to come in early rather than later to change tyres, so I've got a harder tyre on now, and I'm lapping a bit quicker, but obviously the horse has bolted, but uh, we just do as good as we can. Uh, Oh, and Chris Lambden's borough pairs Commodore has gone into the wall uh, right at the bottom of the straight and taken the back right off the car. Mm, goodness me. That's been a very solid knock. He's gone in there absolutely smack bang backwards by the look of it. Lucky not to rupture the fuel tank. I'd be getting out of that thing pretty quickly. Well, there is an unofficial uh, trophy for the uh, first normally aspirated car to finish in the championship, and he was the points leader. I don't think he's going to collect now. No, that's pity. Jimmy Richards, car number two. Up to ninth. See Jim two wheeling it over the top of Honda. We had to hang up on Richo then. Might get him back for chat. Uh, Richo, it's brother Crompton here. Can you hear me? Hi, brother. How are you? All right, buddy. I can't shake hands at the moment. No, no. We'll reserve that for later. So what sort of times are you doing? Oh, hang on to her, Richo. Uh, not fast enough. <laughs> it looked pretty fast then, mate. <laughs> is that uh, something I should be copying? It was about hitting you. Uh, didn't do it quite right, is it? Yeah. Uh, uh, Jim, it's uh, probably a little bit frustrating after the car was so competitive at Winton. Oh, yes, but, you know... You've got to keep, keep trying and keep going. The motorsport world during the week were impressed to see the photos of the new car. That must have you excited for 1990. Yes, it certainly does. I think it'll be a very, very good package. And, uh, you know, the cars have gone extra well as they've gone on this season. So to get something new like that next year will be real good. You're looking forward to Bathurst with a consistent car like this? I am. It's got faster as the races have gone by. But I think at Bathurst it'll be at its peak. Well, thanks again, Jim. It's uh, great looking over your shoulder and uh, we won't interrupt you for much longer because I think it might be a bit distracting. I'd like to try and catch someone in front. Thanks, mate. Okay. I might talk to you for another half an hour. Back in the lead, Peter Brock. 0-5 with about 13 minutes to go for the grand final of the Touring Car Championship. And it appears that he's got away from dip just a little bit. As they come on to the uh, start finishing straight, let's have a look at it. Recap them for you on the Caltex race score. Sure has. Peter Brock is our race leader. Dick Johnson runs in second. John Bauer is third. Glenn Seaton fourth. And Tony Longhurst is fifth. And don't forget, you can enter our Toyota Corolla sweepstakes. All you have to do is fill in the missing words. Toyota, oh, what a something. Mount somewhere Bathurst and seven dot, dot, dot. Fill those three in, put it on the back of an envelope along with your name and address and send to Corolla 7 Sports Sweepstakes Television Centre, Epping, New South Wales, 2121. You could win a new Corolla. We'll draw at the Amscar Finals on August 6th. We'll be back at Oran Park in just a moment. Brock continues to lead the grand final of the Australian Touring Car Championship at Sydney's Oran Park Raceway. Only 10 minutes to go until the chequered flag falls out. And at this stage, it looks like Brock is really starting to pull away from Dick Johnson. About a three and a half second lead, I think he's got at the moment. That, uh, we have to ask the question, does John Bauer, yes. Does that bring Bauer closer? It certainly does. Oh, what was that that went out the window? I think it was Dick's hand. <laughs> uh, I think he was way, might have been held up for a moment or two. It was something, no, something, I'm sure something came out of the window and it wasn't his fist, apart from his fist, I should say. Now, a dilemma is there for John Bauer. Do you sit there and play uh, rear gunner to the boss? Has the, has the boss got problems with the 17 car? I think Dick's got to drop back a fair way before um, it alters the uh, final equation. About sixth, I think. I, I really believe JB will go past if he can and uh, try and beat Brock. One of them really needs to knock him off, otherwise it'll, uh, it'll take a shine off the championship, I would have thought. Not so far as Peter Brock's concerned or... Uh, the sponsors, I wouldn't think. So, John Bauer closes in behind Dick Johnson. Their cars run second and third on the road. 
And all the time, Brock is opening that gap. Dick's not sliding the car around quite as much as he was a little earlier on. He might have really got to the end of the, um, the life of those tyres. Braden is just sort of hanging in there now and trying to drive it straight. It's very... that, that could be it. Oh, brake well, lock up there. Well, Peter Brock leads. Second spot, Johnson. Third spot, of course, is John Bauer. Fourth spot is uh, Glenn Seaton in the Nissan. I'm sorry, in the um, Sierra, the Peter Jackson Sierra, and right behind him. Tony Longhurst in 25. And look who's closed up right behind him, Alan Moffat. This is a very good performance from Alan. Sure is. Excellent. He's usually my sparring partner, so I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just looking at him here, a little green with envy, because uh, fifth or, or so, that would be a good position to finish. Well, that's what they're about to squabble about as they come up on Brian Callahan in car number 37. Alan darts down the inside. And so he's been able to pass uh, George Fury. There's Frank Gardner. Looks happy. I mean, that's happy for Frank Gardner. <laughs> oh. In the meantime, we'll take our Caltex race cam in Colin Bond's car. Cole is running eighth on the road at the moment in the Caltex CXT uh, Cosworth Sierra. He's driving it very gently. Ooh, yeah, he's just like two. She's got a bit of a noise in it. Just goes it ever. It doesn't sound like it's running. Oh, it's not. It's just gone past our commentary point and it's. Uh, she ain't running on all four. Yeah. He's waving them by. So he's dropping back through the pack. Smithy's gone past him. It is in trouble. That's a bit of a worry. So no <laughs> offence, John Smith or Toyota. That's a great and fast little car, but uh, it certainly tells you there's something wrong with the Sierra. Yes, he's just uh, limping around for the finish of the race, waving them all by. So John Smith goes by. One of the uh, three drivers in this small car class for Toyota. They're all out there running last time we checked and uh, from New Zealand of course Robbie Francovic has joined the uh, Touring Car Championship Circus for the uh, final rounds driving the Whitaker's Peanut Slab Sierra was running in 10th uh, is still running in that spot so uh, Robbie Francovic started the season a little late wasn't really in the points but the car has been running reliably the fellow who uh, would like very much to go to Bathurst and uh, do well there. They had a bit of drama with the car yesterday and I think he was off the back of the grid today, so uh, to come up to 10th, that's a good result. Well, we know that he's got the ability. We saw that great championship win in 86 with the Volvo, but um, as is the case with this game, you've always got to be in the right place at the right time with the deals and he's trying to get back up on top again and a result like this will do that for him. So Robbie Francovic, 27, runs 10th. He was the recent winner of the New Zealand Truck Grand Prix. He was too. And, uh, all the spectators over there in the land of the Long White Shroud thought it was fantastic that their local boy did so well in the trucks. Only five minutes away from the uh, chequered flag. Coming up to put a lap on Robbie Francovic. Gee, looks cool out there today, Peter Brock. 05. We take our Dulux Auto Color race cam. Just fantastic to see Brocky get up and win one. Fair and square. Not a class win in a in a BMW where he was battling all the big cars. This one's on the road against Dick and the boys and all that technology. And he's put it together after looking uh, sensational uh, in the last couple of rounds. A little unlucky, as Neil said earlier, to play bridesmaid. Some heartening news here for Bradley because this ultimately becomes your car with a new car coming for uh, for Peter. It's great news. He's <laughs> <It's, it's> sitting <laughs> there grinning. The uh, the funny, I was just thinking the same thing. Uh, you you come away, you watch these cars race around. You don't realise how much work they put into these things. When we uh, got these cars at the start of the year, they were quite quick, but um, we needed to do a few things to them to. Uh, well, to well, make them do what they're doing now. So. George Smith and, uh, and Pat Whittle and uh, all the boys have worked pretty hard. I know that you step. came out here uh, at the beginning of the season. <laughs> he's waving, waving already. Crowd, think he's yeah. confident and happy? Yeah. I'd say so. It's uh, a pity we can't talk to him. That's right, they all put in a... They very rarely get a day off. I mean, Timmy's not here this weekend. He works on my car. Um, but that's the first time he's had off for, for a long time. They work so hard, long hours. 
and um, it's a thankless job. Yeah, and now it's paying off, so it's it's not just good for Peter, but it's great for the whole team. You know, it's lift us all. Second and third. Will John Bauer pass Dick Johnson? No, I don't think so. Not now. Doesn't look that way. I think that's maybe. Uh, well, it doesn't sort of help John's cause because. As we said, Dick has to finish further back in the pack before it changes the order of the uh, championship. What was Dick tapping his brakes up yeah, for? Yeah, maybe he's having a, a bit of brake trouble because he locked one earlier. Well, there might have been the brake bias knobby throughout the window. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. Adjusting it with his fingernail now. Well, there's back in second and third. And doing um, quite nicely for that formation finish in second and third spot. Let's have a look how they are running out there on our Caltex race score. Peter Brock is our race leader from Dick Johnson, John Bauer. Fourth spot held by Glenn Seaton. Fifth by Tony Longhurst. Sixth place, Alan Moffat. Great drive that. Seventh, George Fury. Eighth, Jim Richards. Ninth, Robbie Francovic. And now coming up into the top ten, Mark Scaife in the Nissan Skyline. So they're the, uh, they're the positions. Won't be too long before the last lap board comes out. Race one hour in duration. Johnson gets away from uh, JB going down the front straight. Oh, been a very severe brake lock up there, twice. Well, I think JB certainly having a go. Um, you know, you don't come charging down there, leap on the brakes and lock one up if you're not uh, throwing everything at it. Then hit the team leader. Yeah. Oops, sorry about punting off the track there, Dick. They uh, they don't enjoy one hour of really hard running, do they, these cars? No, they uh, start to feel a bit secondhand towards the end of the hour. She's a she's slightly uh, rubbery sponge. And it's hard work, you know. The hour's nearly up. You're in there and... Um, Hit your pulse rates up around 165 to 200 for an hour. That's a long time. It's sort of like running a marathon. You take a drink with you, but that's about it. You don't get much of a break. About the only time you do get the rest is when you're going down the straight. That's right. When you see Peter get out of the car, or indeed of all these fellas, uh, Dick and John, when Gary speaks with them, he will be blood red. I tell you what, the crowd's starting to come alive too at uh, Oran Park. They, I guess, believe the fact that they're going to be a part of a Peter Brock victory. And an outright victory. He scored his uh, 50th career pole position yesterday and going to become the all-time touring car championship round winner here today. In between the lap ones. Yeah, Brock won't be taking it easy. He, uh, he believes in driving it as hard as he can, as long as he can, and he'll, uh, he'll be stepping into it right until the last lap, I would think. But this, uh, in fact, was the last track that he had a win on. And that was last year in the Pepsi 250 in the BMW when he beat uh, the Nissan team, then driving the BMW. And uh, prior to that, it had been a while between drinks. Sure, it had and, been. And uh, I think it was a Holden Commodore up at Service Paradise. So this will be sweet for Peter. Well, everything's coming together at the right time of the year. I think uh, this is the best chance a mobile team have had at Bathurst for a fair while. And uh, coming up to Honda Corner. Time almost out in the grand final of the Touring Car Championship. Brock gets a little sideways coming down through the dog leg. Corner comes up and Peter Perfect exits that turn. Heads down Oran Park, start finishing straight and the chequered flag will fall. Brocky has done it. Brock wins the grand final today to become the most winning touring car driver in history. Second spot will go to Dick Johnson who locks up the championship and third is John Bauer who takes runner-up spot status in that championship. So congratulations, Peter Brock. I don't think there'd be a motorsport uh, enthusiast around Australia that would begrudge Peter Brock a win here today after setting record time in practice yesterday, 50th career pole spot, and then locking it all up today with the Touring Car Championship Grand Final. Let's recap them for you on our Caltex race score. Well done, Peter Brock. Race winner, second spot goes to the new national champion, Dick Johnson, and third spot to the championship runner-up, John Bauer. What was that old Peter Brock slogan? He drove like the devil. <laughs> it was good fun. Uh, I really thoroughly enjoyed that. I guess Dick did too, although it's a different feeling to be chasing, I suppose, instead of being uh, chased. Uh, I think it was a magic race. I mean, I think the crowd got their money's worth and uh, all in all, uh, I'm wrapped. Phenomenal race. Great way for you to finish the season, especially with, well, I said the touring car season, but yes. with Bathurst yet to come. Yes. Uh, 
culmination of a lot of hard work and uh, I think, uh, you know, I predicted early on we'd win before the series was out and I think a lot of people said, you're being optimistic, Brock. Uh, that's my nature. <laughs> and anyway, we won. And uh, it, I think uh, to Mobile and to Bridgestone particularly, those two companies have uh, really supported us. He certainly hounded you pretty hard for oh. Oh, most of the race. I, I thought there was something wrong with the rear vision mirror. It turned red. <laughs> John Rose here from Shell National Marketing Manager. You deserve to have this hung around your neck. There's no doubt about it. Thanks, John. Well done, Peter. Congratulations. Thank you. There you are from Shell Ultra. Or, uh... That's a great win, eh? Peter Thank Brock, you. winner of the final round, but there's no disputing Dick Johnson is the winner of the Touring Car yeah. Championship, a record equaling fifth championship. Congratulations. Thanks, Wilco. Thanks. Big effort, but, uh, oh, gee, I mean, you really tried hard uh, the whole race, but he just wouldn't be caught today. Yeah, no, it was, it was a good race, and... Uh, uh, I got up close a number of times and then I'd sort of go back a bit because of the traffic and then I'd have to sort of work my way back up again and by the time uh, he got a bit of a gap when I got caught up in a bit of traffic uh, it sort of just pays hell on your tyres so uh, I suppose uh, seconds better than last. Is that it? what brought you undone? I mean the, the chase just finally told on the tyres? No, not at all. I, I sort of drove the race... Uh, I thought I'd let Brocky uh, know what it was like to have somebody up his ass for a change. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was no doubt about that. You certainly let him know. And as I said, it was obviously a bit of a disappointment not to win the grand finale. But, uh, well, the championship is yours, and there's no disputing that. The cars have uh, performed faultlessly for two years in a row. Uh, we've had a great run, and I'd like to thank uh, Neil and the boys for giving us such fantastic cars. Uh, out of all the races in the championship, they've finished every single one, and, and certainly to Shell and Palmers and all the other people in motorcraft. Thanks very much indeed. Congratulations. Five touring Thanks, car Wilco. championships. Big effort. John Bell, let's have a quick word because you were in there with a shot at the start of the day of taking the title away from uh, from the boss, but it just wasn't to be. But uh, you can't be unhappy. No, we had a good day. I mean, my congratulations to Brocky. He drove very well. Where I sat, I could see it all. And uh, Dick threw a lot at him and he, uh, he responded beautifully. Um, you know, I didn't win the championship, but Dick's a very fitting winner and it's good to see him win five. Maybe I'll have next year's. And Bath is still to come. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be uh, very interesting, isn't it? Obviously, uh, we're not going to have it all our own way. OK, thanks very much, John Bad. John Smith's here for uh, thanks, okay. a quick word. How are you doing? Good, very good, actually. Uh, wonderful. Happy to win the manufacturers. Yeah, well, I mean, it was great for Toyota to do that. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It's good to be back. It's good to drive a Corolla. So. In fact, a faultless performance by the Corollas all season to win the manufacturer's title. Well, that's what it was. Reliability took them home. I think uh, it's typical of Toyota. That's, that's what they're known for. And they've done it again, I think... Uh, I think we haven't failed to finish a race this year and it's been terrific. Fantastic. Congratulations again. Great stuff for Toyota. Great stuff, uh, obviously, for the Shell Ultra Australian Touring Car Championship and uh, a dream result for Peter Brock in the final round. But you can't take the championship away from uh, Dick Johnson. He is the Australian Touring Car title holder for 1989. Brock, Johnson, you can't beat it. And when they get to Bathurst, well, look out, there's going to be all hell to play. Right now, for our seven network viewers, here's Mike Raymond. Thank you, Gary Wilkinson. Well, a big day for Toyota, so viewers around Australia, now we're going to give you an opportunity to win a new Toyota Corolla, valued at $15,600. All you have to do is fill in the words. Toyota, oh, what a... Mm, mount somewhere, Bathurst, and seven... You should know that one. All you do is put in those three missing words on the back of an envelope along with your name and mail off to Corolla 7 Sport Sweepstakes television centre Epping New South Wales 2121 and I'll tell you what we're going to do all those correct entries will go into a barrel then we're taking that barrel to Amaru Park Raceway on Sunday August 6 and then we will draw one out and the winner will receive a new Toyota Corolla to celebrate Toyota's win in the manufacturers championship here today and don't forget our viewers poll that we've been running throughout today so you can have your say on group A the question we put to you is, should the technical rules governing Australian touring car racing be fine-tuned for 1990 and beyond to encourage closer competition between the brands? CAMS and the entrance group are still to make up their final decision on that, so maybe you can have your say. If you don't agree, you believe everything should be left the way it is for the next two years, call 02 Sydney 11 626 and register a no vote. If you agree that maybe it should be changed, then there should be fine change, 02-11-628. Now, for people taking the telecast live today and our replays across Australia Sunday evening, the lines will be open until 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Monday morning. 
The presentations continue. We salute Peter Brock, who has won the grand final here at Oran Park Raceway this afternoon, driving for Mobile. And also the champion for 1989, Dick Johnson. What a performance, equaling Pete Gagan's record of five national championships. And a great runner-up spot going to John Bowne, the championship. The most consistent team in 1989. We trust you've enjoyed the Australian Television Network's coverage of the National Touring Car Championship throughout season 89. We of course have a lot more motorsport to come on 7, along with the Amscar Touring Car Finals on Sunday, August 6, and then the jewel in our crown, Mount Panorama Bathurst for the Tui's 1000 on Sunday, October 1. Mike Raymond, on behalf of Gary Wilkinson, Neil Crompton, Brad Jones and our team saying goodbye from Oran Park. We look forward to seeing you next time we go racing at Amaru Park Raceway.